So far all of our work has been on a single worksheet. If we want to work with multiple worksheets, we can do that pretty easy. Manually, if I wanted to add a second worksheet, I could just add it. I can rename it. And finally, I can delete it. And it gives me this prompt to make sure I want to delete it, and I say yes, and it's gone. I can do all those things in VBA. Uh, if I want to work, add a worksheet, the command is worksheets. Most of the time, this is plural, dot add. And when I run it, it adds a worksheet and it makes the worksheet active. It means it's the one uh, that is selected and ready to receive data. If I want to make scores active, I need to click on it. And now I'm back to scores. So we'll look at the activate here in just a minute. If I don't like that sheet to name and I would rather add it with a specific name, I can do that by specifying the dot name property and then passing the name in a string. This will add a worksheet named results immediately before the active worksheet down here. So if sheet two is selected, it'll put it in front of sheet two. If scores is selected, it'll put it in front of scores. If I want to have more control over where that worksheet is placed, I always want it to be at the very beginning, even if scores is selected. Dot add would just add it in front of scores, but if I want it to be the first worksheet, I can do something like this. I can specify a before, and then worksheets one, and this is just an index number. So it's before the first worksheet, no matter what that name is. And I'm going to give it the name of results. So even though score is selected, it's going to place it in front of the worksheet with index one. Right now that's going to be sheet two. And it places this first. If I select scores again, and I decide to add a second worksheet, it's going to add it before the first index. And the index would be, this would be number one, this would be number two, this would be number three. So it's going to add it before one. If I wanted my new worksheets to always be added to the end, um, I would have to count these up and then tell it to add the worksheet after that. So that's what this is doing. It's saying add after, and then just like we had this index of one up here, well, that index could be two or it could be 50. We don't know how many worksheets we actually have, so we need to count them. So that's what's going on here. Worksheets.count will return a number, in this case, one, two, three, four. So four would go in there, dot name. If we had seven, uh, it would count them up, and seven would go right there. So replacing that index. So this is added after that. Uh, so let's see, let's go results end. So even though it's selected way back here, when I run this, it's placed at the end. If I were working on different worksheets, the one that's highlighted or the one that's selected and ready to be worked on is considered active. So in this case, results end is active. If I were to click results, it would become active. Sheet two would become active. So I have to be mindful uh, if I'm going to copy data uh, A2 through E7, I'm going to copy it and paste it somewhere. If I'm on sheet two and I try to highlight A2 through E7, the data is not there and it will cause an error. So I need to make sure that I'm able to get onto the correct page I want to be on. Uh, so if I want to copy that data, I would grab it from scores. And now I can activate scores and then I could copy, I could calculate, this is probably more with calculations, um, anything like that that I needed to be able to do. If I didn't activate scores and I was trying to run this totals row and I was actually back here on sheet two, there's nothing to total, I would get an error. 
So activate just lets us move between these worksheets as needed. The other thing I can do is delete a worksheet. And again, I'm just specifying the worksheet and then using the delete method. It prompts me just like it does if I'm deleting it manually and then it's gone. So when I'm using these worksheets and I'm using these tab names, it's specified like this, worksheets, and then there's this little string and that name has to match the tab name. So what we've been doing so far has been focused on these tab names. And if as a user, they open your spreadsheet and they're doing some work in here and they don't like this name results too, they find that's not descriptive. So they re decide to rename it to um, data to the user that's more descriptive. Well, when you look at your code, you're actually referring to results to tab which is now gone. And when that happens and your application tries to run, you get this subscript out of range, which generally means you're trying to do something that isn't there. So the user could be well-meaning by changing this name, but by changing this name could break your code. So as developers, we want to use a code name that's set by us and that doesn't change uh, and that the user doesn't have access to. So if I want to get into uh, using code names, I click on the sheet and this is the sheet that has the scores is the name of the tab. So it's referring to this worksheet. And I can see that this, this name in parentheses right here, this is code name, the first one. So I'm going to change it to WS for worksheet scores. Now the WS isn't required uh, and when you leave this organization you might find it specified differently. Sometimes you might see an underscore. But for us, anytime we set a code name, we're going to have a coding practice that we set it with a little W and a little S. So now when I'm grading your assignments and I see little W, little S, I know you're using a code name. Or if I give you some code to work on of mine, when you see the little w, little s uh, before a name, you know that that's a code name. So that's just a standard that we're going to use. And once I set it, I can see that it changes. So we have what the tab says, but we also have our code name. And I'm going to just set the code name for all of these. So if my code names are now WS scores for the score tab, WS results for the results tab, and WS data for the data tab, those are my code names. I've set those in the properties behind. Now, if I've done that, I can work with them by code name. So instead of doing all this, I can simply use the code name. So this will activate the data tab. or I can activate a different worksheet. Now, if the user were to come in here and change this name, it doesn't affect anything for me because my code is using the code behind the name, which is WS data. So even though they changed it to test, my code is using this code name. And now when I run it, my code continues to work even though they've renamed the tabs. So the code names are very useful uh, when we're working with different worksheets. One last thing that we'll talk about here are these um, alerts, the display alerts. So if I try to delete, the user gets prompted with this delete. Um, if I'm doing all this in the code uh, behind here, uh, I don't necessarily want them to see these alerts. This just gives them the opportunity to click cancel and break my program or to not understand what they're doing and, and uh, just, just cause some general anxiety. So I don't want those alerts to display. So right before the command that will cause an alert to display, I can turn the alerts off and they're just application display alert. 
and set that to false. And then immediately after the command runs that causes that alert to display, I'm going to turn them back on. Uh, and this way, it'll turn them off, do the thing that causes the alert, and then turn them back on so that later, if we're having issues with the program, those will pop up. If I turn off the alerts at the top of my program, nothing will display, but it also makes it more difficult and we, we don't, we're not sure if we're having a problem with the application. So turn them off, do the thing, turn it right back on. And now it looks like this. No alert and it's gone.